What's up, guys? Welcome to the King Closers Formula on this beautiful Tuesday at 2.22 p.m. Last week, we talked about the four buckets of sellers. We went into depth of breaking it down, when to break down, where the sellers land, and the two buckets that we want to be trying to close, right? Price is right, highly motivated, highly motivated, price is wrong. So inside of that bucket, the most common bucket that you talk to, right? The price is wrong, but they're highly motivated. They need to sell for a discount. We talked a lot about educating the seller, right? Breaking down the numbers. It's math. It's not magic. And then when you can also push on that pain and have the emotional conversation based around the pain and motivation that the sellers talk to you about. So today, we're going to break down some live seller calls that I've had in the past where I'm going to react and I'm going to say, hey, this is where I like what I did. This is why I'm doing what I did. This is what I wish I would have done better. One of the videos is actually the first ever live seller call that I ever posted on YouTube. So it's been around. I think I did it in either 2018 or 2019. Uh, it was funny. Um, I had just bought my first ever webcam. I had just set it up. I was on the phone with the seller and I just said, Hey, let's just hit record on this and see what happens. And then it ended up being a great call. So I posted it on YouTube. Some of you might've seen it, but in today's call, what we're going to do is, is actually have me break down some of the things I did on that, as well as one of the calls from this previous 50 day challenge where the seller wanted a significant amount. Now I will say on both of these calls, we get over a six figure price drop from where they originally wanted. Okay. So that's the value that's going to come in today's is where you're going to see how the seller was way up here and through math, logic, educating the seller, we got them to significantly come down off of the original asking price. So if you're on Facebook, what's up, Vault members? Thank you for being here. What's up, Patrick? What's up, Biz1? And uh, what's up, Mr. Angel Meza? Everybody's doing great over here, man. Uh, it's been an awesome week for us. It's been the first week of Titanium University doing the uh, – daily implementation calls with every, everybody inside of Titanium University, seeing people um, already get deals. Some people got multiple deals on day one. I think our first person in the community got a signed contract less than two hours after the first implementation call. Um, so it was, it was awesome, man. Uh, looking forward to tonight's call at 5 p.m. Uh, you interrupted me from watching Cassie's video. Well, go but make sure you go back and uh, and watch Cassie's video. She brings a ton of uh, value. There she is with the titanium emoji. What's up, partner? Um, daily is wild. Uh, the daily imp implementation calls is wild. Uh, but like we said since the beginning of 2024, this year we are wanting to eliminate all of the excuses that anybody has um, to not succeed inside of virtual wholesaling. And one of the ways we, we felt we could do that right out of the gates for the people inside of Titanium University is daily implementation calls. All right, let's get to it. Well, actually, let me open this up to you guys. Do you guys wanna see the old or the new call first? I don't care which one we do. So. If you want the old call, the one back in 2018, 2019, drop old in the comments. If you want to see the new video, the one that was just happened in 2023, say new um, in the comments. We got a couple olds right out of the gates. Look at this. You guys are like, yeah, we've seen, we've seen the new. Oh, we got one for new. All right. Mr. Knowlton's Meyer. Well, you're going to see both no matter what. All right. I think old. Old is going to win out. So here's the thing. The old one is before the closer's formula was even a thing, right? So 
I, I think it's going to be fun for me to kind of nitpick. I haven't watched the video in probably six, seven months. Um, so it's going to be fun to see where I nitpick. And I'm like, oh, I really wish I wouldn't have done that. I do actually mess myself up in the call. I do end up uh, getting a uh, signed contract on it, but I actually screw myself um, on the call. All right. <laughs> Someone says, old so we can see a before and after screenshot. Woo, buddy, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That has been, what, five or six years. Let's see how much I aged here. All right. Let's uh, let's bring this up, and we're just going to roll right into it. Okay, guys? Do you have a particular number in mind? I, I know that it needs some work to it, um, you know, and, and obviously it, it's kind of a unique situation because you're, you're kind of what I consider in the family because <laughs> with, with, with Lauren and, and, you know, her, her family and, and things like that. So I, I want to, you know, I, I have a number in my head, but uh, I want to see, you know, did you have a number in mind that you're trying to get from the property? All right. So backstory here on what's happening. At the time, we weren't outsourcing vir or cold calling the virtual assistants. We actually had cold callers inside of our office. So Lauren was a cold caller that worked for us. She had a baby daddy who lived in this house. And baby daddy said, hey, landlord needs wants to sell the property. Um, so I think that's what your, your boss does at, at your job. Why don't you guys try to buy it? So... That's what I mean by you're in the family. What I do like is, is right out of the gates, this does follow the closure formula. I'm getting a price out of her right early on, right? How much are you looking to get for it? What I don't like there is, is I didn't just ask and stop, right? I asked and then I kind of mumbled on about, you know, you're in the family. It's kind of a unique situation. I have a number in mind. Um, I didn't have a number in mind. I don't know why I said that. So just things that I do differently nowadays, right? I, I would never say that. Um, what's what's your number? And then just stop. Well, um, yeah, it has. I mean, like it needs to be at least two seventy five, um, just because of other things that I've recently sold. Um, it's you know four bedrooms. You know, it's got you know new. Um, well, we just planted a new tree. Well, maybe that was a couple of years ago new tree um we um put a new roof on it several years ago um so just things like that it just okay so she wants 275 let's write this down so her original asking price 275 and the, her reasoning behind it is because of other things she sold and then she's done things like a new tree and a new roof. Okay. So $275,000. Now that listen, I get the audio is not going to be perfect on her side. So I will try to uh, interject. If you guys have any questions, ask. There's times where it's a little bit difficult to hear what she says at all. Uh, but $275,000, that is above the after repair value. Okay. You know. Gotcha. Um, I, I think that number is going to be pretty hard for us to, to get to, um, the highest sold property I've seen around there that fits the same square footage is, is 260. And that's, that's with, you know, being in good condition on the inside. And, and from what I understand, it's going to need, uh, some updates cosmetically on the interior, um, as far as like um new carpets painting um some of the bathrooms and kitchens true. yeah the bathrooms and kitchens probably need to be updated so so one thing i want you guys to pay attention to is what the the foundation that i just laid there the after repair value is 260 okay so arv 260 and then also the order in in which i just outlined what the repairs are going to need to be done right um, new flooring, painting, kitchens, bathrooms, okay? Um, you're going to hear me repeat myself very frequently in this call about the after repair value and the, the repairs that are needed inside the property. Uh, we're going to be significantly less than that 275 number for sure. Well, can we meet in the middle and do 265? 
Uh, no, I, I'm saying 265 is what it would be worth if it was fixed up. So, so if you notice there, uh, first of all, an adorable counter on her part, and we're only like 30 seconds into the call, but, you know, hey, can we meet in the middle at 265? She's not understanding what I'm saying at this point, right? Um, also, if you notice, I said 260. She said 265. I think this is important to point out. I did not argue with her right there. Instead of saying I said 260 and she said 265. I just moved the needle to the ARV is now 265. Okay. That's irrelevant to me at this point. I'm embracing no. And I'm really just thinking about walking away from this. This is not going to be a call that's going to be closed on. So right now it's about pointing out the facts and seeing if she's going to chase after me with motivation which I feel like this is her first step in doing that, right? Well, can we meet in the middle at 265? She's already price dropped herself $10,000 just with me pointing out the first fact. That's like what I would want to sell the property for after I put the repairs into it. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be much lower than even 260 because um, that's what I would list it for if I fixed it up. Like if I put all new flooring, painted the interior, fix up the kitchens, bathrooms, all of that, I would list it at 260. Um, I think that's the max amount that this property would get on the market. Um, well, I cannot go down to 250. I, I mean, that's just, I know you got a lot to put into it, but, um, yeah, I, I think we're way off. Cause I mean, I'm not talking about, so at the three minute mark, which I have a 30 second intro video on this, she says, I cannot go below 255. So she now has dropped herself down 20,000 just based off of me pointing out the numbers. I mean, we're still nowhere close, but this to point out just by explaining some numbers here you see how the needle is moving in the right direction for us and this is signifying how motivated she is to me and i just have to keep repeating myself right so now i'm going to go back into hey this is what the property is worth this is what i'm going to have to do to the property well like <laughs> i i'm nowhere close to to 260 i mean we're we're gonna i'm gonna be starting with a one <laughs> in front so um, because I'm looking at if we're going to be putting new flooring, paint, kitchens, bathrooms, square footage is like 21, 25. I'm probably going to put 40 or fifty thousand dollars into it to sell it for 260. Um, well, uh, then you can't start with a one. <laughs> uh, that was a. Gr if you're having this sort of a conversation with a seller, and then they go that route, where when she says, "Well, it can't start for a one." All that's meaning is is she's not understanding how we're getting to a one. So this is right in our wheelhouse where if you're utilizing the profit calculator, you immediately can go straight to the profit calculator and say, well, let me break this down for you. If we're at 260, here's our holding costs, here's our closing costs, here's the rehab, and here's how I'm coming up with that number. Um, so to me, this is already validation from her that – she is willing to come down on price. Um, well, yeah. I mean, if, if, if I'm going to list it at 260 when I'm all done and I'm going to put 50 into it, I'm down to 210 and then I want to make some money and I have holding costs and things like that. So, um, you know, we're, we're probably going to be uh, way out of the range that you're wanting us to be in. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't know that you were wanting um, that much for the property and, you know, I apologize if that was misleading to you, but, you know. No, I haven't discussed numbers with anyone. Okay. With Lauren or, you know, Alex or whatnot. Um, I just, you know, I'm not a, you know, complete, you know, I have to make some money as well. And, right. it, you know, it was purchased at 200000 So I'm not going to lose money on it. Does that make any sense? Right. Um how long ago was it purchased at 200? Um, I 
probably 10 years ago. Right. And, and since then, have, have any of the interior been updated? Yeah. Um, like the, we put a new sink and disposal in. I mean, like we're not talking about, there's no sense of me going in and repainting a house when the same tenants are there. There's no sense of me going in and recarpeting a house, especially when there's, a, you know, you know, several people in and out of that house. Um, you know, that just doesn't make sense for me money wise. Right. As far as like a new roof, um, you know, anything and everything that ever needed to be fixed, it was typically replaced. Right. So, um, you know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, I, I, I get your position, you know, unfortunately, as as landlords, because I'm a I'm a landlord. I mean, I, I own quite a bit of properties and when you get into the situation of, you know, I bought it for X amount, I've owned it for, you know, a decade. And if, if you've had tenants in it for that decade, I mean, they've, they've done a lot of wear and tear to it. And so where that's where that comes into consideration on, yeah, there's a new roof, but that doesn't fix the issues with having an outdated kitchen or outdated bathrooms or even bathrooms that have just, you know, had wear and tear on them with tenants. Um, same thing with new flooring, um, things along those lines. So yeah, it's great that it has a new roof um, and and even some of the other smaller items like a new kitchen sink and a disposal and things like that, but there's still gonna be quite a bit of cosmetic work that needs to be done just from, just taking it from a, a square footage standpoint. You know, we're, we're gonna have to paint the entire interior. We're gonna have to put all new floors. Repetition. Um, you know, there sounds like there's going to be some drywall work to remove some of the uh, wallpaper that's, you know, in, in the kitchen and things like that. So all of those things we have to take into consideration. Um, so great question down here. Would you have handled that objection the same if you had an identical call nowadays? Um, I think so. I, I think what's happening right now is the repetition of me talking about the physical condition because obviously she's motivated to sell the property but what i understand um is that the property being physically distressed is a a motivating factor for her even though she's not talking about it um it is a motivating factor for her and eventually i'm gonna really push on that pain I haven't yet. I just keep repeating that, hey, I'm going to have to do this if I'm the buyer, right? And and then when she brought up the fact that she bought it for 200000 10 years ago, I'm putting that in my back pocket, and I'm going to bring that up later in the conversation where I also talk about the 10 years worth of rent that she collected on this. And she did not do maintenance to the property, right? So as a landlord... You can't own a property for 10 years, collect rent, and not do any repairs to it, and then think you're going to get the maximum amount of appreciation that happened on the property. That's just not a fact. Um, and she'll eventually come to grips with that. But yeah, I would have I would have handled that objection the same way. Also, the the age of the appliances and just all of those things that that adds up to a significant amount of money. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Um, just looking at it as like, you know, where I feel like the top dollar is 260,000. Um, what I have to do to get to that number, I have to take that into consideration. Um, and just based off of 2,100 square feet, you know, we're looking at somewhere between 20 to $25 a square foot for all those repairs to get that fixed. So uh, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do right now is, I want her to agree on two things, two numbers, okay? I want her to agree that the after repair value is 260000 and then I want her to start agreeing to the fact that it's going to cost somewhere between forty to 50000 to repair the property. That is my objective right now. If I can get her to agree to those two numbers, then the only thing that we're really truly negotiating is how much money I'm going to make. And that's where we want these conversations to get down to. I want a seller to tell me, you cannot make that much money on my house. 
Because then I know that they're not motivated enough to do business with me. More often than not, a seller is not going to go to that level to say, you can't make, you know, 15, 12% profit on this deal. They're going to understand that would be asinine to say that. So that's where I want her to agree to those two numbers right now. Um, that That's where, you know, I, I can give you a baseline number. I mean, without seeing it, I would really... Say it's twenty dollars a square foot. So okay. that puts us at what forty forty two thousand. I would probably start at one hundred fifty three thousand. Oh, there's no way, man. There's well, no I and I can I can show you how I'm getting to that number. Uh, so now we're gonna hit her with straight math. Um, not a terrible reaction, to be honest with you, because she says, there's no way, man. Um, and, and so when she's saying there's no way, it's just that she doesn't understand the numbers. So we're going to we're now going to go straight into the conversation of numbers. And, and again, my objective here is to get her to agree to the after repair value and the, the rehab number. Um, also, um, I just had a. Totally lost my train of thought there. Anyways, let's get back to the call. <laughs> um, for me, it's just a, a mathematical equation. I take the 260,000 and multiply that by 75%. So 0.75. And this is how I break it down to her on this. I would change this now with the profit calculator. This would be um, one of the changes that I would make. Because what I would say is, is if we're at the after repair value, it's going to cost this much in closing costs this much in holding costs, this much in repairs, and then I'm making this much of profit. This is how I get to that number. I would break it down a little bit different. What that 25% is there for is for when I sell it on the back end, the realtor fees, the closing costs, my holding costs while I own it for the utilities, the taxes, insurance, things like that, and then my profit. So, so are you going to sell this because well, the one thing that I was under the impression of was that you're going to continue to allow Alex and Andrew mm -hmm. to live there. Okay. I know I've got the deal right here. Her objection to me breaking down the numbers was, okay, insert new objection. I thought you were going to let the tenant stay in the property. I didn't know that you were going to resell it. That's We can easily overcome that. I'm now... 100% certain that I am closing this deal based off of that response because she had zero objection to the numbers. And I feel like the reason why she came back with this objection is because she actually just doesn't know how to have an objection to my numbers yet. So now she's just bringing up some BS excuse about the tenants like she cares. Um, no, my intentions would definitely be to, to fix it up and sell it on the market. Okay. Well, uh, you might talk, that's the one thing that, I mean, why I, you know, decided to talk to you guys is because, um, you know, I, I offered, you know, Alex and Andrew, you know, first opportunity mm -hmm. to purchase the house. That's not within their means right now, but they want to stay there. And so, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Alex is under the assumption uh, that, you know, they won't move. So basically everything that just happened right there is she wants the tenants. She thought the tenants wouldn't stay. I'm asking Lauren, my cold caller, hey, tenants don't care, right? And then the main thing is, is they just want enough time to know that they need to move. So, all right, easy. Yeah, I mean, we we would obviously work with them. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I'm it, Lauren's my employee, so I, I want her to make sure Alex is in a good spot, and so George is taken care of, and things like that. But their daughter, um, I, I think they're they're definitely under the impression that if we purchase the property, that that they're going to have to find a new location. We obviously wouldn't be uh, ruthless about it and say you got to get out right away. We would make sure we give them time to find a new place and such. I mean, we might even have a, a, a place ourselves that might be a better fit for them as well. So, um, okay. I mean, 
mean, as much as I can say, you know, I just, these guys have been the best tenants I've ever had. Right. And that says a lot because I own a lot of properties. Right. So, um, you know, from, you know, just a fifth grade teacher that lives by herself um, to these guys, these guys are hands down a thousand times better. Right. And that's, you know, a lot you know, when I They're first took on the properties, close. Um, they were my grandmother's properties. And right. I wasn't sure about um, just, you know, having a couple college guys, you know, living in the house, but they were getting great. So I want to take care of them. Because yeah, and, really great yeah, and obviously we we have to make sure that they're taken care of because you know that like I said, you know Alex takes care of Georgia, um, and so we we got to make sure that you know we we you know get Alex in a good place and and all of that. So that would definitely be taken into consideration, and and we would work with them to make sure that they're in a good good spot. Okay. I say consideration a lot. Um. Well. I just honestly, I don't, I just don't know that selling it at $153,000 is worth anything at this moment. I mean, like you said, the comps, I understand that you're going to have to put, you know, $40,000 into it, but, you know. Boom, baby. We got her to say it. I know that you're going to have to put 40000 into it. You said the comp said two sixty. What is that? That is her validating our numbers that we have been educating her on, right? Which are facts. It's absolute facts that we're going to have to put 40,000 at minimum. It's it's actually 42,000. And then the after repair value, that was truly the after repair value. So we're getting her to now repeat the facts back to us on what's going to happen. Even if you put Forty thousand dollars into it. Um, I still don't think. I understand if you want to make profit, but I do too. And I'm not, you know, in this game to lose money. I just need to, you know, move on to some other, you know, things in properties that, you know, I too can make money at. But losing, I mean, like, that's just. Well, that's well, just well what about this? Sorry. I mean, you you sound like you're you're an investor as well, so. Yeah. Um, what about getting creative with the deal? Um, and maybe we can bring the funds to fix it up and we sell it, um, together and we joint venture on, on selling the property. Okay. So now I'm going to picture an ovation and seller finance. So here's the thing. I don't really have a problem with what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to let you guys listen to it. I would not do this nowadays. Um, this was prior to me having a hedgehog concept. This was back in what I called my cookie monster days. This is when I was developing a lot of issues for titanium investments. We actually ended up buying this property. We actually flipped this property. We did not wholesale this one. Um, so again, this was back in the days where I was taking down everything. And, and again, every single call had moments like this where it was like, well, let's get creative. Let's make every deal a win. Uh, I don't think I embrace no enough at this moment. However, this part right here did enable me to get it via cash. Okay, so what would that entail? Um, well, I've never done a joint venture, so. Well, I've um, done a lot of them, so I love working with other people. And I, the one thing that I love about real estate is is that you could be super creative with it. Um, yeah, you know, I, I mean, agree. yeah, I could totally be one of these guys that's like 153,000, take it or leave it. But at the end of the day, it sounds like you're gonna leave it. So what what benefit does that give me? Um, but I could also sit here and say, well, things change drastically if I don't have to actually have to purchase the property. Um, okay. For example, there could be a way, do you have an underlying mortgage on the property? So it, it's free and clear. Um, so there is a way that you could, we could do it a couple different ways. You could either keep the property in your name okay. and we could bring um, the funds to closing or not the okay. closing, to bring the funds for the rehab. And then when sure. we sell it, we agree on, you know, obviously we would recoup our rehab funds 
and then a, okay. a, an agreed amount of set profit for us out of the uh, net proceeds. Or okay. the other uh, way that we could do this, which could make you a little bit more passive in it, is you could seller finance the property to us. So you essentially become the bank. So okay. you could sell it to us for X amount of dollars. We would make it higher than 153,000. And then we would bring the money for the rehab. And then when we sell the property for 260, then you would get your bulk sum later on uh, when we sell it. So you would essentially become like a, a mortgage company where you would actually be the bank and then you get paid off when we sell the property at 260. So I'm bringing down the two options to her. Um, great question here. Uh, did you make more money back then with all these different strategies? Hell no. I thought I had the opportunity to make a lot more money, but what I essentially was trying to be is a wholesaler, a flipper, a landlord, a lender, uh, an Airbnb host. Uh, no way. No way. We no. We we lost, um, just an astronomical amount of money. Uh, not having SOPs set up for each one of those businesses, not having a hedgehog concept, um, absolutely uh, would not recommend uh, trying to run all those different types of businesses at the same time. Uh, would you take the same strategy on explaining seller finance to a seller? Absolutely. I mean, that's how I explain it to this day. Um, and then we're going to get into the numbers here a little bit uh, about those two different strategies. And this is what actually enables me to get the deal is because I am pitching those uh, creative offers to her. When we break down the numbers, it doesn't really change a whole lot. In the meantime, you would make interest on your money. Okay. So um, like interest on the, the, you know, on the 260, is that what you're talking about? Or uh, well, we would well we could go higher than 153 so because you gotta think when i when i purchase the property there's expenses that are associated with that so if i don't so if i don't have to actually purchase the property i would be willing to pay you more where you could profit that compared to you know a lender or uh you know title companies and all these things that take you know funds from closing on the property itself i could funnel those through to you um so those are the two different ways just off the top of my head that we could do it um i mean personally for me i like the idea of the joint venture um it would just depend on how much of you know say if we sold it for 260 and we put 40 into it that leaves us roughly 220,000 we're at to pay a real well let's say 260,000 we got to pay a realtor um you've got a property listed right now how much are you paying that that uh broker to to list that property honestly that's not my property it's my sister's so i have no idea gotcha. but i do have a I do have a real estate agent that I would prefer to use um, if at all possible. I just, you know, I'm friends with a lot of people in Denton and a lot of realtors. My best friend's a realtor, and I just don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So this guy is fantastic at what he does, but he's outside, and no one, you know, no one gets their feelings hurt. Right. I so one person over the other. Does that make sense? Yeah. So do you think it's like? You know, would they charge you 1%, 2%, 3%? Just off the top of your head, I mean, just so I can run some numbers. Um, he would probably charge me, you know, maybe 2% at the most. Um, he would definitely not charge me 3%. Okay. I could probably even, you know, get him to do, you know, 1.5%. Um, so let's call it 2 for the sake of doing this, and then we got to pay okay. the buyer's agent uh, 3 So 5%, that costs 13000 so 260,000 minus 13,000 equals 247,000. Um, then we subtract the 42,000 for repairs. That's 205. Slight little move there. We went up from 40 that she was saying to the 42,000. Um, Anthony, this was 2018 when this call took place. 
Um, Patrick, we do still do creative finance deals inside of our wholesale model. It's just our exit strategy is to wholesale it, not to keep it and hold it or flip it. Um, how much are taxes? That doesn't seem, I mean, you know, I understand that you're, you know, I'm not going to take it exactly high again. I mean, it seems like we're getting real close to that same 153 number. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to get down to what, what it's going to look like. Um, okay. Minus 54, 51. So we're going to be right around, we'll call it 195,000 is what I would see net if we sold it at 260. If we put 40 into it and we sold it for 260, we're going to be right around 195 and net. So yeah, I mean, if if then you were to split it with me, yeah, I mean, or or give me some kind of split off of that, yeah, we're probably gonna be somewhere close to that um, one fifty number. Yeah, I mean, that's it's funny how math works out that way. I mean, it always gets you back to to where we're gonna be. And there's the line right there. It's funny how math works out that way, and it's gonna continue to work out that way through the rest of this conversation, right? The numbers are where they are because that's where they have to be. This is why I always say we don't make low ball offers to people. This is why I don't believe in anchor pricing people where you drop some low number that then you can't back up with any math or logic, right? I gave her a real number right out of the gates. She gave me her number, 275. That was the first number she said. And then I gave her the number of 155. And now I'm backing it up. She can't back up hers with anything. I'm backing mine up with math and logic and reasoning. And that's why eventually she's going to agree to it. Um, I mean, the, the only other thing that I can think is, is I mean, if, if you wanted to do it yourself, I mean, you could do that. But that's part of what I thought the motivation was there is that you didn't want to do the work yourself. Boom, baby. I mean, you mean a rehab work? Yeah. Yeah, no, I really don't. I, um, yeah, no, I cannot. I'm sorry. When was the last time you saw the, the inside of the property? So now I'm moving away, right? What was my objective? My objective was to get her to agree to the after repair value, to get her to agree to the rehab numbers, make her understand the math, she now understands the math. Now I'm going to push on the pain and the motivation. Well, I mean, you could just do the work yourself. No, no, I'm not going to do that. No. Okay. Now we're going to push on. Well, when was the last time you went and saw the property? When was the last time you actually saw what these bathrooms and these kitchens look like? Uh, that's yeah. Because, I mean, when I was talking to Lauren, I mean, it sounds like it, it's a bit gnarly on the inside. I mean, I, I'm sure they're great tenants, but they've been there for what, like five years at this point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like it's it's in pretty pretty rough shape on the on the interior. So, oh, God bless. I mean, oh. that's just part of the issue. And I mean, I would I would be fine with going out and like walking the property with you. And kind of showing you what we see. No, this is where I screwed myself. Watch how she just jumps on this. I just, I had it. I had it, and then I inserted an objection. This is a drastic difference from what we do now. And this is why, this is a perfect example of why I harp on having a hedgehog concept. Right? What? Not having a hedgehog concept. What am I doing here? I'm going to buy this property, and I'm going to flip it instead of wholesaling it. Now, I'm going to tell her, hey, I would gladly leave my comfortable office in Fort Worth, Texas to drive all the way out to Denton, Texas. That's a 45-minute drive. Then walk the property for an hour with you and then drive 45 minutes back. I just wasted three hours of a day to close this deal when I have her right there. This is the difference between me now and then. That was a huge mistake, what I just said, by saying, hey, um, I could come out and I could walk the property because what's she going to do? 
She's going to be like, fuck yeah, baby. Let's elongate this process. Let me think about this. Let me sleep on this. Yes, let's absolutely do this. Watch how she jumps on this. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, there's not much of that. Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, binding contracts to do that. Right. Um, I know that's, you know, time out of your day, but um, at this point, that's, you know, the best I can do. I just, I don't, I can't, I can't comfortably say, okay, let's do it for a three. I just, I'm sorry. I just can't. Um, I just, um, yeah, I would be silly just to accept that. I understand you working through the math and, you know, I've done. <laughs> Of course, you're willing to do it. I just gave you your out. This is terrible. Trash. But what I do here for the next, like, I think eight minutes is try to dig myself out of the hole. And why, this is why it's inefficient. Okay? It's inefficient inside of your business. I just completely ruined the clothes that I had on the line here. Plus, I ruined another day where I had to, instead of talking to another seller, I had to go finish closing this one instead of doing my job here. What we can, you know, make, what we can do in the middle. Um, let's just see. I mean, I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to, you know, just, you know, figure out different options that the both of us could, you know, have doing that. Um, I just, I can't just, I would be a dumb businesswoman. If I just accepted 153. I would be a dumb businesswoman. So now she, I let her talk. I did a good job there by shutting up, okay, and listening. And I let her talk long enough to where she gave me something. She said, I would be a dumb businesswoman if I sold. Now she gave me something that I could go back to, which I, what did I, do? what did I put in my back pocket earlier, right? I put in my back pocket the fact that she's been a landlord collecting rent for the past 10 years. Let's pull that out. Let's play that card. Over the phone for the first time we talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, no, I I I can't disagree with that. Um the only way I would kind of combat it is is I mean, have you had anybody pull comps for you and then tell you what they thought it would sell for if it was fixed up? They um just a 210 to 250. Fixed up or as is? As is. So I think that might work if you were to list it on the market um, as is. You know, I, I think it's going to be much closer to the, the lower number. Um, but even if you were to get 220 on it, um, you know, and then you, you know, you paid the 5,000 and realtor commissions, that's 11,000, you're down to 209, and then you're going to have the property taxes for this year, plus the closing costs, because when you're the seller, you pay the closing costs when you're on the retail yeah. market. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, you might be able to net more that way. I will also say that there's a, there's a strong possibility that, you know, you could list it. I've, I've got two properties on the market in Denton right now that we fixed up um, over in, uh, what is that place called? I want to call it the Con Plantation, that's not right. It's uh, it's over off of uh, Lantana is the street. Um, let me look up this stupid uh, subdivision. I'm digging myself out oh, of the Preserve at Pont Pecan Creek. Do you know where that's at? It's over off. Really Montana, I know in Montana. It's um, it's east of thirty five, um, right over by Bucky's. Oh, okay. And it's this. Uh, the I've got two on the same street: sixty six oh two Lantana and sixty five oh one Lantana. Um, uh, I don't know what I was thinking buying two houses on the same street. That was dumb, but uh. <laughs> That one's thirty. Yeah, right. One's thirty four hundred. One's thirty two hundred. Um, and I've got I've got both of them listed at three fifty. Actually, one of them I just lowered to three forty. Um, 
and those properties have just been sitting. I got this one that's been on the market for 146 days. Um, and I mean, honestly, we're not getting showings and it's a beautiful house. Like I've, I've gone and been like, okay, I'm going to critique like what's going on here. And, uh, there's nothing wrong with the house. And so that would be another concern of mine is that, you know, days on market could be, um, a little bit long on this property. Um, but, well, and I'll be honest with you, that does worry me as well. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I don't have the patience right now to deal with stuff like that. I just have some health issues and, you know, just don't want, I, you know, I'm at the point in my life, I just don't want to have to worry about shit like that. You know, right. in the past, I have rehabbed, I have painted, I have done shrug, I have, you know, done whatever I've needed to do to save cost. But in today's, you know, mindset, I don't want to do that shit. Right. I'll do, I can do some of it, maybe. I don't know. I hear my stuff coming out of my mouth. I'm like, eh, maybe not. Um, but I just, you know. So, Anthony says, damn, in 2018, what was wrong? Bad neighbor? No, it was a great neighborhood. They ended up selling. Um, we were probably just right at the top of the, the market value. Um, for those of you in the Facebook group, yes, we leave all these videos up. Um, as well as they're always on the YouTube channel. So you just, uh, YouTube channel is just my name, RJ Bates III. Um, questions about the close and stuff like that. I'll, I'll recap it here at the end. We're almost done uh, with the conversation. We're, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, and then I'll, I'll kind of update on what happened with this one. So what are you thinking? What would be a number that you would, you could swallow? <laughs> Come on now. Go on. We we gotta we gotta do some some math here. You know that doesn't work out. I didn't tell you that two seventy five that number. That was that was something no. you manufactured. That was that wasn't me. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's silly to get into this if, if you're not going to, you know, be business wise about it. I know, but um, you have been wise. You've been collecting rent on it for 10 years. Yes, I have. And um, that's been wonderful. I just, you know, for, for things that I just, you know, I've got to release some things at the moment just for, you know, my sanity. All right. So. You want to start at 200 and I want to start with 150. Hmm. <laughs> so I just reset the anchors right there. I don't know if you caught that. So you want to sell for 200 when our original asking price was 275,000. And I said, I want to get it for 150. But my original offer was 155. I just reset the anchors. Um, I already know where I, I want to get this because I already knew what my exit strategy was going to be on this. Um, so I'll go into that here in a second. But again, I know I'm getting this deal. I know I'm going to be profitable on this. It's just about getting at the number I needed at. <laughs> Let me see. Let me burn this calculator real quick and see how, right. how high I can get. 260. I'll go to 80%, which is like, I can barely feed my kids when this is over with. Oh, come on, man. And 42,000. The only person making money on this is is the contractor. Um, oh. you, made, you flipped the script on me. See, six years ago when I was a contractor, I would have made money on this. Um, you can go back and contract it and rehab it? Uh, no, I, I don't do that anymore. I, I my my days of going to Home Depot to pick up one sheet of sheetrock are over. So that was a that was a miserable experience. Boss man, we're at, we we're one doorknob short. Can you drive forty five minutes to get us one doorknob? Oh my goodness, that went my day. Um, I mean that's how I felt about you know like. So I flipped the script and instead just 
taught myself and have to drive all the way to Denton to close a deal that I could have just closed on the phone. I still hadn't quite learned enough yet. I, I was getting there. I was getting there. I just need a few more lessons. Okay. 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 See, I'm trying to alleviate those problems from you. I'm trying to take this property from you and you won't give it to me. So what, okay. a, what about 166? 175 baby there it is hundred thousand dollars in price drop she went from 275 all the way down to 175 and at one point in time she said i cannot go below 255 okay so even though there's mistakes in this call the end result is exactly what we want and literally 100 thousand dollars down by educating her repeating repetition right paint carpet kitchens bathrooms 260 40 thousand in repairs making sure that she understood where we were coming so i've got her down to 175 let's see let's see if i'm okay with that golly okay let me read them out there 175 <laughs> 60 what is this? 82% minus 42,000? No, it's 260 times 83% minus 42,000. No, we're still not there. Um, 175 is, is really hard. I mean, uh, we, okay. you've given uh, 153. Give me your best offer. Come on. I'm family. You said so very beginning. You're right. You're right. I Give me your family. best offer. Come oh, on, baby. Right. <laughs> Two, six. All right. Whenever they say that, and we're, listen, the reverse rapport is in full swing right here, right? We're laughing. We're joking. We know we're doing the deal. We know we're doing the deal together. She's saying, just name the number, and I'm going to say yes to it, okay? We're going to get there. Always make this, the final number, a very specific number. It's just human psychology. I don't know why. Instead of saying like 170000 say $170, $238. Something about that makes it feel like that's, it's the finality to it. Okay. 60 times the family discount of that. $168,637. All right. I'm not saying yes, but I do need to just think about it. But I would like, I mean, like, is there any way um, you do a walkthrough with me? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a walkthrough with you, but I want you to sign a contract before then. You know how many times I've gone out to houses to do walkthroughs with people and then they're like, I slept on it last night, and this $168,000 house is worth $300,000. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. What just happened? I drove 45 minutes, and you went into outer space. I can't do this. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, totally I, could, I could show you all the things that we're going to do to get, to get you that $42,000 number. I know, that's a, I know that's a good number for us. Um, how about this? Are, are you going to say you need to think about it no matter what? Yes. Oh. I'm sorry, love. You're one of those right. people. I get it. I'm not one of yeah, those I people. I'm definitely not one of those people. See, I was willing to come up. Look at that. You got me up $15,637. <laughs> All right. How long do you need to think about this before I start blowing you up? Um, just give me 24 hours. I mean, like, not even 24 hours. Just call me tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Anytime. Sounds good. I'll call you then. All right. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Olivia.
All right. So we got her down $106,000. I love my closing line there of being, uh, I you got me up $16,000. Uh, could have backfired on me because she could have been like, yeah, but you got me down $106,000. We're definitely not meeting in the middle. Uh, but we did end up going, driving out to Denton the next day, closing the deal. We got it for $168,000. We closed on it. We used a hard money loan on that deal. And then we immediately, once we took title to it, we sold it to Open Door and we made $40,000 on that deal. So essentially, Open Door can make much smaller margins. Um, they were buying everything up in that neighborhood. And so it was a quick, easy hold tail to open door. Um, and we didn't have to do anything. We made $40,000 on that deal. So uh, it, it worked, um, but it did take too much time. Um, so that was old school. I have to admit, though, yeah, I haven't changed that much. The beard's actually gotten better. Um, so sound quality and uh, video production has gotten a lot better. But hey, for that being six years ago, that wasn't too bad. Closing skills wise, though, I've got a lot better. So, uh, any questions on that one? We've got one more I want to go through. This one was from the last 50 deals at 50 states challenge. And uh, this is right in the middle of the challenge. Um, this is a bigger price point as well. How much did I sell it for? So, I got it for 168. I made 40,000 on it. Um, so we probably sold it for like low twos because, uh, there was fees associated. So probably somewhere in like the two fifteen, two seven, two seventeen range, something like that. We netted, uh, 40,000 on it. All right. Let's bring up our second video here. Uh, this, this deal actually funny enough. It's not going to lead to a signed contract. It's going to lead to me sending a contract, I believe. I actually haven't watched the end. Uh, but I know that when I sent the contract, he did not sign it. Um, he actually called back into the office. Or actually, I followed up with him a couple of times. He said he wasn't ready yet. Um, and then he called back in the office and eventually um, sold it to us uh, a couple months after the 50-day challenge. So bring it up hello this is rj yes hi uh, so my name is josh patel and i filled out you know um uh, your website form yes on uh glenn eagles yeah 3009 i was just curious to see what you guys are all about and all that you know i'm like getting ready to sell the house but um uh, you know I was just looking at to see what the market will, uh, you know, give me for my house. So this is an inbound lead that I called and left multiple voicemails on. And then the seller called back in. And so that's why I answered the phone. So this was an inbound lead. Um, and then he was just calling back in and saying, okay, I just want to know what you guys are about and how much I can get for my house. I know you have to have more details. Right. Um, so we're we're real estate investors. So we're cash, buy as is, no realtor commissions or anything like that. Um, did you have a specific dollar amount that you were looking to get for the property? Um, I mean, all the properties, you know, they go from, you know, they're like probably averaging a million dollars in that area, you know. So okay. So we asked them for his asking price. His response was, Houses in the area are going for a million dollars. All right. So there's the anchor, million dollars. It's like, a, you know, it's a pretty nice area. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the, the subdivision is high end in that for that neighborhood, for that town, actually. Right. You see how different I am in this video in comparison to the first one? The first one, you know, it was more about my body language and I was more concerned about what I was going to say on the phone. I'm a lot more relaxed and doing a lot more activity on the computer about deal analysis. 
to me, what this screams is, is I am much more comfortable embracing the fact that I am the buyer. Okay. And the first one that I feel like there was a little bit of, no, I don't want to say commission breath, but anxiety on my part to want to close the deal here. This is, I'm embracing no a lot more, a much stronger posture, uh, just personally watching it. Maybe the seller doesn't feel that, but watching this, I'm a lot more confident in myself on this call than I was on the first one. So taking a look at it, I mean, I got um, a bunch of in the 1.1 to 1.3 range. Um, I, I will say the majority of those houses are bigger than yours. Um, right. like I think there might be an error in there, but I have a full basement that was done. Too. Okay. But I know that doesn't count for. The I'm seeing that you have 48, 48 square feet. Is that correct? I, yeah, I think it's the, the actual house not including the basement is probably close to five like yeah 48. yep and the basement probably i don't exact but probably 2200 to 25 you know the basement gotcha I mean, it, it kind of mirrors uh the house gotcha except for the garage you know what i mean yep uh so i said the arv right there roughly 1.1 to 1.3. His initial asking price was a million. Um, Except for the garage. Pick the garage kind of extends. Do you still have the wood shake roof? Yeah. It needs to be replaced. So I have, like, it was like a hill. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but if you look at the lighter king closer belt you can actually see my screen and you can see me on google street view spinning around looking at the property when we talk about when you're on the phone and you're following the closer's formula what's the first thing that you do go to google street view understand what it is that you would be potentially buying and then you start comping that is exactly what i'm doing right now right i pulled up google street view dropped it in the prop stream privy batch whatever i'm using to comp and now I am circling around the neighborhood and I'm looking to see what it is I'm potentially buying. So you can see it right there in the closers Olympics belt. My screen kind of spinning around. Two, three years ago. Yep. And I put an insurance claim on it. So I got, I had some adjusters help me. I guess I shouldn't have done that way, but I did it. I wasn't very. A public adjuster? I wasn't really knowledgeable about it. Like, so I did, they gave me a claim and they, they were only going to allow like $40,000 worth of work. And I haven't done it. I haven't repaired the roof, you know? Right. It needs a, it needs a new roof, basically. Like, I, it, it's no point uh, doing patchwork kind of thing, you know, like one. You know what I mean? It needs a new it needs, it needs a whole roof. So you never recovered the depreciation on that claim, right? Well, I've been the guy has been calling me to repair it, but I don't want to repair it. I'm thinking if the new owner can get that, or I don't know how I'm gonna work out with this adjuster because he did all the paperwork, you know. But he didn't. He promised me he was gonna get the whole amount, but he didn't, you know. I mean. So I you hired a public adjuster, is that correct? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, so how much money did he get you on the roof? Uh, close to 40. And how much did they give you? Okay, it was 50. Right. I got 10,000 10, deductible, so cash money is close to 40, I think. But there should be a remaining amount after you do the roof where they give you, it's called depreciation, that gets released to you. Yeah, well... I don't know how that works. I'm going to have to call him. I mean, okay, so everything that just got discussed there is vitally important. Anytime there's an insurance claim that is involved with a potential wholesale deal, okay? So this is like fire damage, water damage, roof claims, 
uh, anything like that. It's important to understand where that insurance claim sits. Now, our benefit is, is our first ever business as entrepreneurs was in insurance claim supplements. So we are very well versed in this. So what I'm asking him is, is anytime you have an insurance claim, what they send you is, is they subtract your deductible and then they send you the first ACV check. They're going to hold back the depreciation and you don't receive that until you've done the work and you can prove that you've done the work. So what I keep asking him is, is, hey, have you actually recovered the depreciation? If not, did they give you a check for 40000 and how much is remaining in that? Because if he hasn't done any of the work, what we could do is an assignment of benefits where our end buyer would actually receive the insurance proceeds. And that can help us get a better deal on the property. So instead of our end buyer having to come out of pocket to replace this roof, the insurance proceeds would actually pay for the roof. So that's what I'm trying to understand. If you haven't done the work, then, and you still have that money, that check, that first initial check, then we can assign that to our end buyer and we can actually pay you more for the property. I only got, I only got the insurance checks, you know, but it's written. I got you. So you don't. Uh, Leonard is right. That is pending the policy. There are ACV only policies. It's very rare. Uh, and it's specifically in a million dollar neighborhood talking to a doctor, highly unlikely that they got an ACV only policy. Uh, most insurance companies don't even like give you the option to, to get an ACV policy because they want to charge you, you know, as much as they possibly can. Um, and in this case, it was an RCV policy. You don't have an, uh, you don't have an estimate from them? Yeah, I mean, I was getting it, but I like I depreciate the roof. I get it, but why would the insurance company give me money for the depreciation? Like, why would they? Because after you do it, that's their way of making sure you do the work. So, for example, they'll say, "Hey, the total roof is eighty thousand dollars. We're only going to give you fifty thousand up front, but you have a ten thousand dollar deductible. So here's forty, and after you do it, we'll release the other thirty to you." I don't think. It's I'm not that much. Like, well, I, I, I'm just using those as round numbers. Yeah, I know. I know you're trying to help me understand this stuff. Um, but regardless, okay. that that forty thousand that you got, that's gone, right? No, it's still uh, it's in check form, but we haven't cashed it. Oh, okay. So okay, so you've got that money to do the work. Okay. <laughs> now I'm excited. Because I was assuming up until that point, the check's probably gone. I mean, he probably cashed it and went and spent it on uh, a fun weekend or something. But it still exists. So this is good news. Now this is where I'm going to start talking about the assignment of benefits and stuff. At the end of the day, uh, this is important for you guys to understand. Anytime this comes up, you need to have this conversation with sellers to understand where the insurance claim exists. Full transparency and warning. This conversation. Okay. Is about to get rated R. Dr. Patel does start cussing quite a bit um, here in, in the future. So just full transparency, if you're watching this with kids or if you're at a job or something like that where, you know, full-blown F-bombs, every other word, um, it's about to start coming. And it's just part of what we do. We can't control how sellers talk. So just brace yourself. Dr. Patel is about to let us have it. Um, what it was written between uh, mine and his adjuster's company's name on it, you know what I mean? Yep, like people have to sign it. Yep, okay, so let's look here. What about the rest of the house? Does any of the other parts of the house need work? Well, I would say all the bathrooms are trash, meaning like they're they need more new, like updated, you know what I mean? Yep. Oh, five of them, you know. Uh, the kitchen, the kitchen's free, it's relatively good, but, uh, you know, the appliance, the, the refrigerator is pretty much old, 25 years old, and then we got a new one, and that wasn't a good buy, but he's a high end like, refrigerator. Right, you know? right. All the appliances probably, I mean, they function. 
except for the fridge upstairs, the, the main fridge is not functioning. But uh, the dishwasher and stuff like that, that all works. Um, you know, washer and dryer and all that stuff. But you know, you got you know, it was built in '95, you know, so right. Wear and tear, you know. Uh, the air conditioning unit, they both probably need to replace it. They both old. The heater works. The air conditioning, I need, I need someone to come over, but it, it's giving me troubles right now. So that needs a brand new stuff, you know. So what I'm letting him do right now is talk about everything that he thinks needs to be done at the property. Even though the first question that I really asked him was because he came out, I didn't have to verify that he wanted to sell because he, he basically called in and said, hey, I want to sell my property. I asked him how much he wanted for it. He said, houses in my neighborhood are going for a million dollars. So that's an anchor, right? But I don't really know what he wants. Like he didn't say, I want $1 million for this property. So what I'm doing right now is, is I'm letting him talk about the property itself. We already had the conversation about the insurance claim. When he is done, like, spilling the beans about what's going on with his property, I need to get him to say, I want a number. Because I need to understand, where is he really sitting at this after taking into consideration what everything's going on with his property, okay? Um, Anthony, to answer your question, this was not in Redding, California. Um, this was in uh, Chicago. Right. You know I mean, like it's just not there. So it's it, it needs a it needs a remodel across the board. It needs what? It needs like a a, a remodel across the board, right? Well, I mean, in terms of appliances and stuff, I would imagine you know nothing's like new. You know, like I don't want to tell you like a lot. Right. Stuff like. A lot of the stuff was in there, you know, like when I built it, it worked, you know? Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, it's livable, but like the roof needs to be replaced, which we have the insurance claim on. And then. Sure. The roof, the brick work and everything's good. Oh yeah. And then I replaced all the windows upgraded because there were wooden ones before. Right. And they wet rotted because of. The way my house was in like trees and stuff. Right. I mean, I mean, it wasn't like a good choice. So we got the, the aluminum ones, you know. Um, so the thing I replaced like maybe five, six years ago. Right. Years ago, not the upstairs, not the second floor. The, uh, most most of the basement windows and the first floor. Gotcha. I mean, there's, there's some windows that need to be redone with. We uh, we didn't do it. Did you guys catch that? He stopped talking. I sat in silence. And then he started talking again. Vitally important during these steps. This is where majority, I mean, look at the first call. There wasn't a whole lot of silence by me. Right? There was moments of it. I was I was getting there. But to me, this is where I'm I'm seeing massive differences um, in my closing abilities is right there, sitting in the silence, letting the seller feel a little bit of that awkwardness, and then also allowing them to have time to think about the next thing that they want to divulge to us and tell us. Because at the end of the day, I can only ask so many questions. I need them to tell us the things that are important that we need to know. So right there, that silence to me, that was a big moment. So now it looks worse, you know what I mean? I would say the second floor windows weren't done because they can get damaged from the wet thing. The first floor, because of the lower, I guess it was because of the lower level, I don't know. The way of the lower, I think they got, you know, it, 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 the wood didn't stand up to the time, you know, like that's right. not a choice. Aluminum is better metal, so we got all that done, you know, first of all. So those are new. 
So what's like your, what's your ideal situation? What, what do you want to happen here? Well, I want, you know, I'd like to get sold. Okay. Because I have a house. I got a house that I want to live in. It's just small. I'm like retired and stuff. I'm not retired, but I'm going to be. I can't, you know, my kids are moved out and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm just living there for, I don't know, Sentimental value, I guess. I don't know. I need, I need to be moving now. Okay. Too big for me. It's too, it's too big. It's too big. Right. So if it could be worth a million dollars when it's, you know, fixed up, which obviously we're going to have to do some work to get it up to that. <clears throat> I mean, realistically, what are you thinking dollar wise that? You know, you're you're wanting to get for this. Okay, so the roof is probably what hundred grand plus. Probably. Yeah. Because I mean, it's a big roof, and it's going to need to be a high end, you know, shingle of some sort. Yeah. Well, I think they're they're living with views. So when they built that, they're like that stupid freaking homeowner rules, you know, like everybody has to have shingles. But that's like the worst product, like natural shingles the shit. Right. You know? So see a big difference between the first call and this one? I asked him, after he talked about a lot of the rehab, I then said, what is your ideal scenario? Well, I'd like to sell the property. I'd like to buy another property. This property is too big for me to maintain. When I retire, I want to move into a smaller. Okay. So... Now I'm letting him continue to talk where he he led the conversation to let's talk about the math. This is with the power of the closer's formula right here, where instead of me having to talk about it, I have the seller talking about it. Well, the roof would be a hundred thousand. I don't know how much it's gonna cost with the bathroom. Like now he's gonna start opening up and asking questions. And, and not really understanding how to get to a number. He doesn't know. So I love this. Um, Ashley, where does he get his PPL his PPL leads from? Um, both Speed to Lead and Lead Zolo. In the description of this video, there are links to both. So just click on the show notes. Like it's, it looks nice and everything first two years and stuff, but oh, you know, get it done with stuff, you know? <laughs> You know, it's, it's okay for a shack in the fucking woods, you know? Right. But you can get up there and, like, nail some fucking wood up there, you know, some trees and shit. <laughs> a big ass house like that, you know? I mean, it looked nice and everything when it was getting put off. Like, when, I remember when I was, like, you know, young and, you know, I was young and no one wanted shit, you know? No, I don't want shit. Right. To get to another story. Anyway, so they, they, they put in this, uh, what is it, uh, Fake shingles. Right. That's what they're putting, like all the new ones that I see. My neighbor just did the kids. Somehow he got all of it paid, man. Like, I don't know how he did that. I should use this guy, you know? All right. So what I'm thinking of doing is, how do I get that 40 grand that I got checked and give it to the new buyer, you know? Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So that's called an assignment of benefits. So the essentially right. you're signing over the the insurance so claim. Use that contractor then. Yep. He basically did it. You know, because he wanted he wanted the business, obviously. Right. And that's how it works. But uh, you guys okay with using him then? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. This is a uh, pretty common. Um, in our industry to do an assignment of benefits on an insurance claim like that. It, it helps you out and it helps us out. So that's yeah, definitely something that we can do. I don't, like, I don't want to do tax work. Like, and I don't want to like, you know, like spend any money on it. If I'm selling it, I'd rather just have to give credit for the rough. Right. You know, do you know what I mean? Yep. We're on the same page there. So, the roof, but then we have the other stuff that we are going to need, like you said, the bathrooms, you know, some the air conditioners, stuff like that. So, equipment, yeah. 
So realistically, like, what is that dollar amount that you're looking at? How much it costs? Like, I don't know how shit costs. I mean, the, the reality of it is, I mean, five bathrooms, I mean, that's a lot of bathrooms that we have to come in and, and do repairs on. You know, I mean, that, that adds up. Like, okay, so two, four. Just so everyone's aware, he has a number, okay? He is not wanting to run me off right now by saying his number. So that's why he's wanting to know how much is this going to cost? It's why he keeps repeating himself. I don't know how much this is going to cost. I'm fairly certain I'm getting this deal at this point because of the way that he is talking and he's navigating this conversation on his side. He is not wanting to run me off. That's why he's not getting the, giving me the number. He has a number in mind that he wants for this property. Bathrooms and all the others are like half, you know, no tubs. You know? Right. Do they? How many of them have showers? Okay, one, two, two in the basement, uh, three, one on top, three, two full base, two full bathrooms upstairs. Uh, and then two like uh, toilets, no no showers. Sometimes it blows my mind when I ask someone that has a, a doctorate, like a simple question, like how many bathrooms in your house have showers? And it takes them a solid 25 seconds of counting to figure out how many bathrooms. <laughs> this will blow my mind. It's like, dude, if you ask me how many bathrooms in my house have showers, I'm just going to tell you a number. <laughs> It blew my mind. It was simply just three. That's all it was. Three. Got you. So three, three full and two halves. Um, so the halves are are pretty easy. The the three, and then of course the the primary is going to be uh, the one that we want to put the most money in. Um, also, just this comes from our short six months of doing television. Do not say master bedroom or master bathroom. Um, it is primary, um, specifically uh, when you're talking about or talking to a seller in certain locations, okay? Not to get political, but if you're talking to someone in a liberal state uh, or if you're talking to someone of another ethnicity um, and you're white as this shirt as I am, you need to pay attention to that. Um, just you don't want to get something in the way that doesn't need to be in the way by saying, master bathroom or master bedroom and and that causing like being a trigger for that seller so just eliminate that from your your language nowadays i talk about it all the time language is important um start getting used to calling it primary bad bedroom primary bathroom um that's definitely a thing in the realtor world where you cannot use that language anymore you have to call it the primary so just pay attention to it because it's not spoken about enough but it could be a trigger for someone specifically uh, if that's something that they've already changed in their language. Uh, just change the times, use primary. Um, and it's going to need to be high-end finishes uh, because of the price point and the neighborhood, you know. Um, main, main, main bathroom is above the shower, above the garage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the main, my main uh, bedroom his door was designed, and then he got walking calls, everything he sends him over the garage, you know? Gotcha. So, I mean, you know. Anyways, that, 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 that needs a new, new, he, he, okay, so let's say if you replace all the bathrooms, all right? It, that's what I would say if I were to move in in that area, like, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I was looking, I'm hoping to get like 700 or something like that, you know? We finally got it. It only took us 15 minutes and 13 seconds. But he went from houses in my neighborhood sell for a million dollars to I was hoping to get 700,000. So 15 minutes of a lot of questions, a lot of talking, a lot of numbers. Uh, a lot of listening. We finally got it out of them. 
$700,000. That is what he wants to walk away with. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we can be relatively close um, to that number. Um, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I know years ago, I, I put over a million thoughts on that. If you think about it, like you know, like right, brand new brand. And oh yeah, the, so when he says he put a million more than a million dollars in on this, <laughs> this is adorable. He's talking about his PITI over the course of time, plus whatever he bought it for. So he's taking into consideration his interest, his taxes, the insurance, any repairs that he's done to it, which were very minimal. Uh, so it's kind of an adorable statement, but it is an objection that is common with sellers to bring up like, hey, I went and did the math on how much I've spent owning this property and it equals this. Um so he feels like based off of that, he would be getting a, giving us a deal at 700000 right? So now I'm going to have to explain how that's not, that's not how it works for us. The swimming pool is trashed, okay? Hmm. Swimming pool is mm, trashed. Man, it's, it, the, the rehab is just getting bigger, you know? Well, the swimming pool, there's no value on it, like in terms of like, the houses with pools are probably more money. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I do like this. He had pretty strong logic behind this. He's saying that there's uh, – I haven't given my number yet, Anthony. You didn't miss it. I, I have not given a number whatsoever. I said we might be close. Um, he did have a strong logical argument that there is no value to having a swimming pool in Chicago. Uh, because it can only be used a small percentage of the year. And it did lead me down a path. Like sometimes it's important for us to listen to a seller's logic, specifically when you're completely virtual like us. I need to understand why would the seller say that and reverse engineer my comps to see if there is value to having a pool. Right. But I mean, we have to do something. It's I mean, we're either spending money to get it just filled in or I mean, are we talking about probably? Probably. I mean, it's going to be cheaper. Uh, let me look and see how many houses around there have pools. Um, one of my comps does, and it it did sell for a higher price per square foot. Um. And this thing, it's nice like fixed up, right? You know, like it's a good, good location, property wise. Like, right. You know, I mean, we did a lot of upgrades, like uh, with the pool. But no, I, I never opened it, and then it's all trash. Like all the kids moved out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I have other houses I move, in, you know, like a live in and all that. So right now, I, I need to uh, see if I can sell it at a decent price and. A fair price, you know? Right. I mean, it, it kind of just depends on um, how much you're willing to come down from that $700,000 number. Because, I mean, when I'm looking at it, I mean, I know that the, the insurance claim helps with the roof, but the bathrooms and the AC and the pool, and I'm sure it needs like paint and some other stuff. Um, what? what do you mean? The paint? Yeah, like, I mean, it was going to repaint the house. I mean, well, it depends on when the painting was done and how good it was. But I would imagine, uh, I mean, St. Rosa could shake the paint job, you know? I mean, what, what number? I mean, like, you, you're deducting, you, you, you're probably deducting, like, rough deductions, right? Like, yeah, I mean, the, the initial number that I had in mind was 600,000. So, 400,000 to, like, get the house in decent shape. Well, more, more like 275 to get it in shape. 
And then when we go to sell it, you know, we're going to have realtor commissions and our holding costs and the utilities and property taxes and everything that we've got to pay. And then that's our spread to make profit on it. Right. Somebody, yeah, you guys have to make money. Right. Okay. So remember, let's rehash numbers. His first thing, houses in the neighborhood sell them for a million dollars. 15 minutes, 13 seconds in the conversation, I got him to admit he wants 700,000. And then the first number that we throw out is the actual number that we need it to be, 600,000, okay? That's not a fairy tale number. That's actually just the number that we need it to be at. So you're thinking what price? Like Six, 600,000. 600,000? Yeah, I mean... You can't go to close to seven? No way. So you're thinking 175000 to get the house decent? No, I said 275 275 275 How are you making money? So I'm going to put 275000 So if I say, if I buy it for 600000 and then I put 275000 into it, I'm at 875 total. And then if I can sell it for, you know, over a million, say I'm at 1.05. And then I've got to pay my commissions and closing costs. So now we're 75,000. I can probably stand to make, you know, anywhere between 100 and 120,000, which is like 10% of my investment. 10%, yeah, at least, right? I mean, that's about bare bones. And if I come up to seven, then I stand to make nothing, you know? Yeah, I get it. 600, I mean, that's probably around the range I'm going to get, you know? I mean, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, that, that kind of looks like... The like, realtor's going to weigh 70 grand just like that. Exactly. With the house, you know? And that, that is a big difference, like, with going with someone like us. There are no realtor commissions. You know, right. I mean, it's... There's a lot of money down the drain that could be used for, like, bathrooms and stuff like that, you know? Right. Instead of just transaction fees, you know? Like, just transactions, nothing, no labor involved. I mean, not much. And there's labor involved, I guess. Right, exactly. But I've done closing with them. So it sounds to me like he's pretty reasonable on that hundred thousand dollar price difference at this point. Um, I'm curious. I don't. I don't remember if I bring up the insurance um, again. I I think I do because what I'm taking into consideration here is is two seventy five but I'm going to want to do an assignment of benefits on the insurance claim that then helps us with that rehab cost. And then that, that sweetens the deal for our end buyer. How is it fucking just like, what, man? Like, so you know? Right. Nothing. 600,000 sounds reasonable. I'm thinking it's got to be real about it, you know, because, the house needs work, you know? Exactly. So the way it works with us is, is if you say, okay, I'm good with the 600,000, we would send over a purchase contract for the 600,000, which it looks like it's in the Patel Maria de Jesus Living Trust. Is that correct? Yeah, me and my wife, yeah. Right. So I'd send the contract over, you would sign it, we come out, we do our inspection, walk through, verify all the different things. We're going to have to get some paperwork, probably talk to that public adjuster about the, the assignment of benefits for that um, insurance claim, and then try to get it closed. You know, I mean, we're right at the beginning of the month, so probably get it closed inside of June. Okay, so I always talk about this, laying out the expectations for the seller of what your process is going to look like. That was vitally important, letting him know like, hey, we're going to send you a contract. This is when we're going to come out. We're going to do our inspections. We're going to need to talk to that public adjuster. 
about the assignment of benefits. Pretty much in that short little spiel, I just laid out all the expectations on what the process moving forward with us is going to look like. This is moving us towards the close. All right. Yeah, I got all that stuff in the house. I got to figure out if I leave the stuff there, are you guys okay with that? I mean, <laughs> it depends on how much stuff we're talking about. Well, I'm thinking maybe some of the furniture usable. I don't know. Right. I mean, taking out the. I mean, I just have to look at it and see. I mean, I don't want to say no because without seeing it, but I mean, we come out there and it's like, bro, you've got you know, 5,000 square feet of just hoarder, you know, stuff. I mean, no, I can't, I can't do that, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of stuff, you know. Right. Because every, everything that we do costs money, right? So if you leave a bunch of stuff that we have to throw away, I mean, I don't mind doing it, but I'm just going to take that out of the price that I'm, I'm paying you, you know. Yeah, everything has, everything has, everything has cost, man. Right. Like nothing is even moving a freaking TV off the wall is like freaking outrageous, you know? <laughs> right? Well, it's America, man. You know? Fuck. Well, um, I'm getting close. I'm, I'm getting motivated to sell it, which is I hadn't been, but I gotta sell it, you know? Right. Sooner or later, I can't, like, something has to happen to that house, like, you can't just sit there and die. Like, not gonna happen. I mean, something's gotta have to happen. I, I want, I want. What he hasn't brought up yet is, and and I I never got there. I I thought we got there on his pain and motivation, but one of his biggest issues, which we learned out later on, and I I, I don't know. I think there's like four more minutes left in the conversation, so I don't think he brings it up. But what we learned on later on was is the HOA was on his rear about this property. And that was one of his biggest motivating factors. So what's hilarious about this is, is I talk about this all the time, like asking questions, finding that pain and motivation. And even in this, this has been a pretty quality conversation for going on 25 minutes. And we still haven't heard from the seller his true pain and motivation yet. So never assume just because you've heard pain and motivation that that's the complete story and that's all of it. There still might be little bits and pieces that they haven't divulged to you yet. You know, somebody else is living it and, and, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, like you said, it's a... It's going to cost you like $300,000, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, like you said, it's a nice neighborhood. I mean... It's it's, it's the main thing, and then the windows come the windows. Right. So let me ask you this: Is your email? Okay. You gonna shoot me an email and about our conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was gonna do is is send you over a contract for six hundred thousand, so you can see I'm serious. Have you take a look at it, see if you got any questions, um, you know, give you a little bit of time to talk to your wife about it and, you know, let right. you guys make a decision. Yeah, it was like a spur of the moment yesterday, but, uh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when, you know, it's if it's a problem and it's a stress in your life and then it, maybe it was spur of the moment, but if you go to her and you say, hey, honey, we got a guy that's willing to give us six hundred thousand dollars, and the problem can go away. It's funny enough that I said that. That's actually what ended up happening. Is they kind of I said the contract. He kind of ignored me for a couple of days. He kind of ignored the contract being sent, and then he came back and he was like, "Okay." talked to my wife we talked about the fact that you guys are willing to give us six hundred thousand dollars for the property so now we're ready to move forward so it's funny that i said that I, I didn't remember saying that but that ended up being exactly what ended up happening in florida you know I'm like no she's not gonna she's not gonna approach to anything i do because i earned everything and i still 
help her out with everything. Right. I mean, you know, I'm just getting old. Well, well, let me send you over that contract. You think about it. And like I said, I'll just follow up with you. And if you're ready to pull the trigger, you just sign the contract. If you have any questions about it, feel free to give me a call. Let's uh, let's make it happen. So how you, you work in Illinois or I see the Texas number. Yeah, we're based out of Fort Worth, Texas. But yeah, we do deals all the time. Actually, funny enough, when you... Uh, when you called, uh, I immediately sent a text to my buddy up there um, and asked him how far away he was from St. Charles at the time. He said, I'm 45 minutes away. So I was going to tell him, like, hey, if you're, if you're close, if he was closer, I was going to tell him, hey, might need you to swing by this property real quick. But he's he's 45 minutes away on another appointment. But, yeah, I mean, we do deals all the time up there. Funny enough, my son plays travel hockey. And so we we I come all I come all the time up to Chicago and um uh, for tournaments, he just did a uh, a checking clinic up there. Um, we were actually we were thinking about uh, potentially looking at coming up, moving up there, um, and and playing full time up there. So, yeah, I mean, we we do stuff all the time up there. Okay, all right. Let me think about all this, and I'll give you a call. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to send that contract over to you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Send over the contract so you can see all the details on it and take a look at it. Okay. All right, thank you. Sir. All right, Jay. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Your name? RJ Bates. Okay. You'll have it on. All right, thank you. All right, bye bye. Do you know how many times I've had sellers ask me my name at the end when it's closed? Yes. It's hilarious. They they don't really they don't really care about probably, that. Probably but I know. Stop talking. All right. So, um, like I said, that call um, led to me sending the contract. He sat on it. He ignored it. Called back in after he had that real conversation with his wife and said, hey, let's take that $600,000. We got it under contract. We sold it. I think we made a $20,000 assignment on it. Um, it was a great deal. Um, Garrett ended up fielding the phone call when it came back into the office. He closed it, got the contract signed, and then did the dispositions on it. Um, so great job, Garrett. Um, also, Mr. Kip coming in with the $5 tip. Great content once again. How do I get in the university? I put it down there at the bottom. Uh, first class of the university is officially sold out. We've already started. Um, so the way that the university is working is, is that the first 30 people came in. They're the Titanium University first class. Uh, they got in for a discounted price. They get to come in and help us kind of develop the course through these first implementation calls. Uh, that's why they got in for a discount. We are going to open it up here again uh, pretty soon. So you can join the wait list at titaniumu.com if you want to find out about joining it in March. So because then it'll be open forever and it will it'll never be like okay only a certain amount of people it'll just be open and available for people to come in so um join that wait list it's been awesome so far hope you guys enjoyed this content i love doing these video type reviews it was fun seeing like the old call back in 2018 in comparison to the call in 2023 um you know big difference there in the, in the five plus years uh, seeing the, the power of the closers formula, my ability to sit back and listen was a lot better. And then also just seeing the difference in how the two sellers, you know, one was coming in and saying, hey, this is how much I want early on. And then I had to educate to get them down. But on that first call, we got a $106,000 price difference from the original asking price to the signed contract. On the second one, Seller played a little bit more ignorant, was a little bit more open to the idea of coming down on price, but still eventually said, I want 700000 and then signed a contract for 600000 So combined between the two signed contracts, $206,000 in price difference. So when we talk about how do you get sellers to lower their price, okay? It's through good questions. It's through listening. It's through math and educating the seller, right? 
the listening is understanding their pain and their motivation. So with like Olivia on the first call, that moment where I said, well, Olivia, if you don't want to accept my offer for $155,000, I mean, you could always do the work for yourself. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, now you're going to have to be realistic about accepting my offer because we've done the math. It doesn't work any other way, even though we pitched Novation, even though we pitched Seller Finance. At the end of the day, the numbers didn't really change that much for her. So what are your options here, Olivia? Your options are you either have to do the work to increase the value of your property or you need to sell on a discount because no one else is going to come in higher. Same thing here with Dr. Patel, breaking down the cost of the roof and the bathrooms and like a little bit more long-winded on the seller side, but still breaking it down uh, and, and getting them to agree to our numbers. I thought the key part of that first call with Olivia, getting her to agree to the after repair value, getting her to agree to our forty to $45,000 in rehab. That then enabled us to only talk about, well, we're just, you're just purely talking about how much money I'm going to make on this deal, right? And then on Dr. Patel's part, he understood those numbers very quickly. It didn't take a whole lot of educating him on that because when I broke down the numbers, he literally asked me the question, well, if you buy it for that, how much money are you going to make? How are you going to make money on this deal? So it made it a lot easier for me to break down those numbers and say, listen, if I give you 700000 I just broke them down. I'm not going to make any money. How did I know that? I had the profit calculator up. I saw the numbers right in front of me. That was one of the things that I was doing on my screen. Hey, if here's the after repair value. Here's the amount of rehab. If I buy it for $700,000, where does that put my profit? If I buy it at six hundred, dollars where does that put my profit? That's why we had to be where we are. So again, no manipulate mental manipulation, no mind games in either one of these closes, no fake underwriting departments, right? No, no finance departments. I didn't have to go get approval from anyone else or try to convince them. It was literally just doing real math. And I think both sellers appreciated that. Appreciate the fact that it was a real, honest, transparent conversation about what was going to be happening with their property. That's why I'm so passionate about this because I think, one, you will win more. You will make more money with this technique. And also, you'll be able to sleep at night. You're going to feel a lot better about yourself because you're not lying. You're not manipulating. You're just being honest with sellers. And you're going to come out of it on the backside being like, man, I, I actually do really good business here. Because facts are, both of those sellers needed us. So one of the hot topics that's come out is, is this new law and this regulation that came out in Virginia yesterday about, hey, if you're assigning contracts, that's you brokering real estate. And so now you have to be a licensed real estate agent, licensed broker in the state of Virginia to do wholesaling. I keep preaching this. They're going to come down on us when we do the bullshit that we do in this industry, we have to get better. This is why I keep saying it, guys. It's going to only get worse for us if we keep trying to do the bullshit that is being taught. If we do business the right way, where we're actually helping people and we're understanding where we fit in in this marketplace and we do it the right way, they're not going to bother us. But if we keep doing the bullshit that is taught in masses, and we think that's the right way to do business, it's not. And they're going to keep cracking down on us. Now, what's hilarious is, is every time they try to come down with the rules and the regulations, there are always loopholes in it. And part of that is, is just due to the government, government's ignorance and their lack of understanding of what's actually happening. But it's still a problem for us. It's one more thing that we have to worry about inside of our business. So. Let's do things the right way. Let's change the narrative that wholesalers are bad for the marketplace, that they're taking advantage of homeowners. Does anyone that watched these two videos think that I took advantage of these two people? The facts are, no, I did not take advantage of these people. 
I did not play any mental manipulation games on them. I did not twist their arm to do something that they didn't want to do. I spoke facts and I helped them and I got their house sold. That's what ended up happening on this. So that's my rant about what happened yesterday in Virginia. Kip says, quick question. I have a buddy that is going through all your content. What two buckets would you recommend right out of the gate? Batch of privy, I told him. So, Kip, I think step number one, he needs to identify what he wants to be. What is his hedgehog concept? Okay, does he want to be a virtual wholesaler? Does he want to be a flipper? Does he want to be a landlord? Does he just want to be a wholesaler in his local market? Okay. That's step number one. Once he's identified that, then I need to understand his time commitment and I need to understand his budget to answer this question. So, for example, if he were to say my budget is $2,000 a month and my time commitment is four to five hours a day, then I don't necessarily know that Batch of Brivy are the best places to put him because – he's then going to essentially be pulling lists and cold calling, right? So he wants to be a virtual wholesaler. Um, I would always want to push him in the direction of the FISBO strategy for free, right? So he needs to go back and watch my video on how I got a deal using $0. Do that for free. And then probably look into joining like Speed to Leads Coupon Club and buying leads from Lead Zolo. So he has consistent leads coming in that are motivated that he knows that they want to sell, okay? And then he needs a comping software. So depending upon what market he's in, he's in but PropStream, Batch, Privy, they all work. Um, those are the directions that I would push most people. All right, guys, uh, got to cut this. We got our Titanium University implementation call tonight in 46 minutes. So, Tyler, it's in 46 minutes, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central. Guys, if you haven't joined the wait list for Titanium University, do so at titaniumu.com. It will be the number one community for virtual wholesaling because why? We're going to teach you how to make a lot of money, but we're going to teach you how to make a lot of money doing it the right way, okay? All right, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow on the Titanium Vault Podcast. Appreciate you.